Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Friday, January the 5th, and our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Devotional for Women. I'm loving it. We're still in the Eternity Part 1 for the first week, week one. And day five, it's the fifth, so our treasure in heaven is today's, the name of today's devotional, treasure in heaven. Our scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter six, verse 20, out of the King James Version, and it reads, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. There you go. All right, let's get into this. Jesus urged believers to diligently store up treasure in heaven, but many Christians don't take it literally. They think it's a metaphor for some transcendent reality. They envision heaven as an enormous cloud bank where believers perpetually drift around strumming harps and singing hymns. Let's be honest. Come on. They therefore think that the treasure, in quotes, that Jesus was referring to must refer to abstract quantities like joy and peace. I think we're about to be told, okay? But the truth is, God has promised you treasure in the afterlife. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. That's out of Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, out of the King James Version. Consider the heavenly mansion you will live in, the crown you will wear, and the streets of gold you will walk on. Those are tangible things that we value here on earth. Big houses, jewels, gold, okay? building material in heaven which shows you how rich heaven is not that we are supposed to seek after the materialistic the love of money is the root of all evil keep that in mind money itself is not evil it's not evil to be wealthy because god can make you wealthy by following what his word says when we align ourselves with it it's not wrong to be wealthy having the wrong motives and the wrong heart about it is where it, it gets corrupted Okay, the Bible repeatedly tells you about heavenly rewards to motivate you to do good deeds. And whatever form these rewards take, they're worth striving for. That's for sure. You obey Jesus simply because it's the right thing to do. I want to do the right thing. I, that's just part of the core of who I am. You want to do the right thing, regardless of whether or not he rewards you at all. Just the privilege of living in the heavenly city would be enough. And I mean to say, there are quite a few people I've heard who are like, I don't care about anything. I don't just pop me up a pup tent on a grassy field in heaven and I'll be happy. I mean, some of us have that attitude, but God is a loving God who wants to lavish upon us things. I love the way that God speaks to us in everyday life and everyday things. Being a parent, and I'm not finished with this yet, I remember so many times the Lord speaking to me and developing me in my relationship with him just by me parenting my daughters, you know, and saying to them, if you would just do what I ask, you would have no problems. If you would just do what I say, you would have no problems. There would be no discipline. There would be no punishment. And then hearing my own words in my own ears and saying, okay, Lord, I see. I just need to be obedient. I need to do what I know is right instead of following the urges of my flesh. And there is a war between your flesh and your spirit. Remember, your flesh is not your friend. Your flesh wants the satisfaction of seeing somebody get theirs because they got you. Okay? Our flesh wants revenge. Our flesh wants extra helpings. Our flesh can get addicted. 
Our spirit can't. We can get addicted to God's presence. Okay, that's a good thing. But our flesh can get addicted, can get addicted to food, to drugs, to liquor, to pornography. You see what I'm saying? Those definitely lead us away from God into paths of destruction. Your flesh is not your friend. That's why we have to discipline our flesh. Our flesh gets jealous. Our flesh gets covetous. Our flesh gets lustful. Those things are not things. Those are things that the, that the Bible tells us to stay away from. Okay? So we have to be careful in what we do. There's a war between the flesh and the spirit. We want to remain in the spirit. We want the spirit man to be strengthened and lifted up. Whichever is the one you feed more is the one who's going to be strengthened. So those people who say, I don't have the strength to be a Christian, well, chances are you're not giving any food to your spirit man. And the only way to do that is by reading the word and getting yourself involved with um, the things that you need to that are going to feed your spirit. Go to conferences, go to church, watch some online church, okay? Get that discernment woke up inside you. Wake up that, that discernment. Connect with God. And if you don't know where to go, just start in your own room. Say, God, I need you. I don't want to keep living this way. I want my spirit man to come alive. It's a conversation you have with him and cry out to him. Then your spirit man will start desiring. Then as you invite the Holy Spirit in and are filled with his presence, he is the one who begins to make the changes. Okay. Suddenly, as you are desiring more of God and less of the world, I mean, you're still going to have those things. Suddenly, you're going to find your friends are not as available as, uh, you know, you're not connecting with those people that are potentially bad influences. And that's a prayer too. say, keep away from me, the people I don't have the strength to resist. Those people that are a source of temptation, that are a connection to a past I want to step away from, make me less available. I don't want to be the one that has to say, get away from me. Nobody wants to be unkind in that way. Just make yourself less available for that thing. As you are walking in your walk with Christ and feeding your spirit more than you're feeding your flesh, you're going to find it's much easier to pursue the things of the spirit than it is to pursue the things of the flesh. Your flesh is always going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not go to church again tonight. Let's sit home and watch TV. Let's sit home and do this. Let's, you know, you're in the grocery store. Your flesh is always going to be leading you down the cookie candy aisle when you know you need to lose weight, when you know you need to watch the sugar and the carbs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Lord, you need to help me in everything. Okay. You'll suddenly, and be, be prepared, when you start making decisions in the spirit to pursue the things of the spirit, the things of the flesh are going to come out of the woodwork because the devil doesn't want you to give up those things because he likes keeping you in a stupor so that you're not effective against his kingdom. Okay. All right. That's That was one thing when I first came to Christ that somebody warned me about. They said, one of those things that was a vulnerability for you, the devil's going to make sure you have it in droves because he doesn't want you to be pursuing the Lord. He doesn't want you to have a successful relationship with Christ. And boy, was that the truth. I'm going to, I kid you not. My vulnerability was attention or affirmation from men. I like to flirt so I could know that I, I was appreciated, you know, and getting attention from men was a big deal for me. Now, I wasn't the kind of girl that just jumped around in the bed with a bunch of people. I just liked the attention I got from them. And I mean to say, in one day, one day, I got eight letters from eight different men. It's, it's astounding to me. Eight letters from eight different men, all of them professing their undying love for me. And some of them, I was like, who is this? You know, and a couple of them had some marriage proposals. I want, I want you to marry me. And I'm like, I don't know you like that. Some people, I don't even know how they got my address because I was new in the Navy and I had met these, some of these guys danced with one guy one time at the enlisted club right after boot camp, just while I was in air airman training. 
And I was like, who is this guy? And then he goes, that night we danced. I was like, okay, that must have been the guy. But I'm like, he somehow tracked me down to my new duty station and told me he couldn't stop thinking about me. And I was just like, okay. It was ridiculous. And I had to laugh because it was such an obvious assault from the enemy. I thought, oh, and on the same day, I run into my husband, Tony. He wasn't my husband at the time. But he tells me, the Holy Spirit told me, you're going to be my wife. And I'm like, get in line. You know, it was like a distraction to keep me from what God was actually sending to me. Of course, it took us about a year because we were friends first. But, you know, it's I'm telling you the truth. When you start fully pursuing God, those things that are vulnerable to you are going to, the enemy's going to make sure they're, they're a temptation put in your way. So be prepared for that, okay? Now let me find my place. All right. This is about storing up your treasure in heaven. Things on this earth we cannot take with us. Our treasure in heaven, we will have treasure. It is treasure. It's what we consider treasure on this earth. Gold and mansions and all this kind of stuff. God wants to bless and lavish you with that, but not just when we get to heaven. He wants us to have a blessed life here too. Uh, you can see that in his promises. When we give, it comes back pressed down, shaken together and flowing over. That means we have everything we need with an overflow so that we can be generous to others. Okay, so just keep that in mind too. All right, be, be assured it's God's good pleasure to bless you beyond measure. God wants to bless you beyond measure in the natural and in the spirit. And we need to pursue the things of the spirit and store up treasures in heaven. We do that by doing what is right, what we know to be right and good and just. Read your Proverbs. Proverbs 5 is a good one, especially for the fellas. It's a good one. That's all about your flesh and sexual purity and all that stuff. Okay. Are we ready to pray? Let's do it. Lord, do you ever stop thinking of good gifts to give us? Help us to remember that we have treasure in heaven waiting for us to claim it. Help us, Lord, to put our focus on what we need to focus on, to do what is good, right, and just in your eyes and be your representative, Father that we are making deposits into our treasuries in heaven, but also feeling and living in the blessings on earth as well. Help us to be prepared as we pursue you anew, pursue the things of the spirit anew that we are prepared for any assault the enemy would throw in our way to make us stumble and fall. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and for your great desire and delight in storing up treasures for us in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. And thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Uh, today's a busy day. Um, Mama's got another appointment at the doctor to check her blood thinner levels. Um, they put her back to weekly um, visits, which I, I says, why is that happening? She should be doing it once a month. But I don't know if her body is just not needing the Coumadin as much. And the Coumadin is thinning her blood too much. And maybe this is the Lord's way of starting to wean her off. Because I've been praying for the Lord to get her off of that. I want her back on just an aspirin. An aspirin a day. Which is what she took for years. So we're praying for God to continue to manifest his healing in my mother's body that she not require that anymore. But aside from that, I just have a date with my hubby tonight. So that's going to be nice. <laughs> and then it's an Eleanor weekend. Yay. I haven't had her heart. I didn't have her at all in December. Her daddy was on a different work schedule. And so uh, he wanted more time at home with her. And so I understand that, you know, Gigi just missed her a lot. So I'm excited. She'll be coming on Saturday along with my friend Janet. So I'm going to have some company this week and it's going to be great. You guys have a wonderful Friday. God bless you and bye until next time.